Let's talk about filter operators. In this case, as we've seen before, I can type ip.addr equal 192.168.1.123 and hit enter. And I could say tcp.src port space equals 80. So this will show me everything with an IP address in it of 192.168.1.123 and also with a TCP source port of 80. Now I could also change that to tcp.port equals 80, which would show me a source or destination port of 80. Instead of using the word and, I could type the and sign twice and hit enter, and it will be the same thing. In this case, let's say we don't want 192.168.1.123 and TCP port of 80. Let's say we want .123 or TCP port equals 80. So now we see everything here that is either TCP source port of 80 or it has the IP address of 192.168.1.123 in it. So we've seen equal, we've seen and, we've seen or. IP address not equal 192.168.1.123. This will show me every packet that does not have an IP address in it of 192.168.1.123. There are a few more operators we can use here. Let's say that we want to see TCP packets with a port greater than or equal to 80. We simply type tcp.port is greater than or equal to 80. And we see all of the packets there where their ports are greater than or equal to 80. We can do the same thing and look for ports that are less than or equal to 80. We just type the less than or equal to sign 80. So we see all of the TCP packets that have the source port or destination port less than and equal to 80. Now all of these filters have a text version or a symbol. In this case with TCP port the greater than sign equals to 80 means greater than or equal to 80. But let's change this to use the text version of the rule and we will type GE greater than or equal to or we could type LE less than or equal to. Or we could type GT, which will only show us ports that are greater than 80. The two last examples I have for the Wireshark filter operators are matches and contains. And we'll get into examples with those later on in our advanced Wireshark filters video. The last one I'll show you here uses the operator contains. So let's say we wanted to look for all the packets that had the word Microsoft in them. We could simply type TCP dot segment underscore data contains quote M I C R O S O F T and then hit enter. And we will see all of the packets that have the word Microsoft in the TCP data. I'm going to clear this filter out. When you're looking for something that's very specific, don't be afraid of having a filter that's too long. Sometimes it's the only way that you can eliminate all of the extra traffic and really get to the traffic that you want to see. For one more use case here, let's look at the entire packet capture again. I will delete my filter and then I will hit enter. Here's what I want to find. I have done a port scan with Nmap from my PC to my router and I want to find that in this packet capture. Well, the packet capture is 95,000 packets. So if I'm going to scroll through here, I don't know if you can see it here, but I'm looking over on the side and that scroll bar isn't moving. If I try to find that manually, it's going to take a long time. The address that I'm going to put in here is the address that I know my computer is. So I'm going to type ip.addr equals 192.168.1.123. I'm going to type or the address of my router. So ip.addr equals equals 192.168.1.1. And I'm going to hit enter here because what I want to see is only packets going from my router to my computer or from my computer to my router. And I'm going to hit enter here. When the packet filter is applied, I can see packets going from my computer to what kind of looks like a Microsoft address. And I didn't get what I wanted. Well, why didn't I? The reason that we didn't see what we wanted to see was because of that OR, because it really shouldn't be an OR. If we look at IP.ADDR equals 192.168.1.1 or IP.ADDR equals 192.168.1.123, here's what we see. This matches 192.168.1.1 to anything, and it matches anything 
to the same dot one. It also matches dot 123 to anything and anything to dot 123. So what we really needed there was an and. If we use and, then we'll match everything from that dot one to the dot 123. We will also match everything from the dot 123 to the dot one. So no matter which direction, we'll match everything between those two IP addresses because of adding an and instead of an or. Now real quick here, if we wanted to match one-way traffic only, we could type ip.source equals 192.168.1.1 and ip.destination, ip.dst equals 192.168.1.123. This would only match one-way traffic. We could flip that around and say the source address of .123 and a destination address of .1.1. This would match the one-way traffic in the other direction. Let me change that to and and hit enter. And we can see that we went from 95,000 packets down to 5,000. We're still not quite there. In this case, I know that it started at the time when it was 1,527 seconds. So what I'm going to type here is and frame dot time underscore relative greater than or equal to 15. 27 and I'm going to hit enter. This will show me all of the packets after 1527 seconds. Here's something else I don't want to see. I see some DNS packets up there. Let's get rid of those. So I'm going to type and not DNS and hit enter. There we go. I only see the packets now that I want to see. So knowing that this is an in-map scan, here's what I really want to know. When the scan was performed, what ports showed as open? To decide that, let's see what happens during a TCP three-way handshake, and then also let's see what happens on an in-map scan. In a normal TCP three-way handshake, we see my computer on the left side, we see the router on the right side. So normally my computer will send a send packet to the router, the router will send a SYNAC packet back, and then my computer will send an ACK packet. That is a simplified version of the three-way handshake. Now let's talk about an in-map scan. In an in-map scan where a port is not open, my computer again will send a SYN packet to the router, and the router will send a reset back. Now again, this is oversimplified. This is saying there's nothing in between my computer and the router. No firewalls, no nothing, no IDS, nothing. I send a SYN packet, the router sends a reset packet. Well, that tells me what ports are closed, but remember what I want to see is what ports are open. So let's see what that looks like. I send a send packet to the router. The router sends a SYNAC packet back. Now again, this is a basic, no options in map scan. My computer doesn't send anything back to it. So this is what I want to see. If I could just filter on these packets here, these SYNAC packets coming from the router, then I could tell what ports were open at the time the scan was done. Well. We can do that. So what I want to add here is and, and I'm going to use parentheses just for grouping sake, tcp.flags.sin equals one and tcp.flags.ac equals one and then hit enter. What we see at the top here are packets that have both the sin and the ack flag set. And I do have the results of that scan, so let's compare. The ports that are open here, first one is 53, we can see source port going from the router to my computer, 53. We have 5380, 139, 443, 445, 10,000, 49152, and 49153. If we go through here and look at these, we've got 5380, 139, 443, 445, 10,000, 49152, and 49153. Now in this case it was me, but maybe you just found a port scan within a packet capture and you want to know what ports were open when that person did that scan. So you can do that. You can do a lot with filtering. So in the next video, we will talk about Wireshark advanced filters. More filters like this last one that we saw, like finding open ports on an in-map scan. Well, that is all. If you enjoyed this lesson and you would like to see more lessons, please like this video and subscribe to my channel because I will continue making content. Thanks. See you on the next video. Bye.